Is that what's happening? 100%. And yeah. what gave you the confidence? Um, delusion. <laughs> Welcome to The Wall. In today's video, we'll talk about the changes in relationships, how women say that men don't want to change, and whether it's right or not to leave the house to your wife after a divorce. Make that like button feel your support and join the channel by subscribing. Add a little of your love to the movement, that's the only contribution we ask of you, man. Share your experiences in the comments to guide other men. Without further ado, let's get started. Here's the thing, that woman had to fall in love with you in the first place, so if she's with you, then you're obviously capable of being the man she wants to be with. The problem is that you stop being that guy for whatever reason. Maybe it's because you've changed or you stopped caring, or maybe you were never even that guy to begin with. And if you pretended to be who she wanted, then that's your fault, because you can't introduce a woman to a version of yourself that you're not capable of maintaining and then expect that relationship to work. But I think that most of the time, it's just men getting too comfortable. You get so used to her being there that you stop putting in the effort that you need to in order to keep her there. You stop dating your wives. You know how to make her fall in love with you while it's still exciting, but you don't know how to make her stay in love with you when it counts. It's so unfair to ask someone to teach you how to love them, because then it's not love, it's just you doing what you were told. And you're supposed to be your partner, not a project. But women tell you what they need you to change anyways, because women don't replace men easily. They stay until there's nothing left. So you might act surprised when she leaves, but I bet she told you a million times what she needed, and you just didn't start listening until she left. And maybe you called her a nag, but she kept saying the same things over and over again because they were never resolved, and that's when she was teaching you how to love her, but you didn't listen. Couples very rarely fight about different things. They fight over the same problem that isn't fixed. So I find it hard to believe that you didn't know what the problem was and that she wasn't talking, because women don't stop talking until they've checked out. They don't check out until they've talked to you long enough to know you don't care. Stop it. Get some help. I've seen women cheat simply because they were bored. I've seen women who get tired of just being a wife and leave. I've seen women who, no matter how hard the man tries, she ends up leaving him just because she never loved him. Maybe you're right, and there was a persistent problem that was never resolved. But it could also be that he was fighting day after day to make her happy. No matter how hard he tries, he won't succeed because the woman's own dissatisfaction with herself might not allow it. Many women leave a home for many reasons. The problem is that women expect men to change as if they were some kind of project, while men expect women never to change and remain the sweet woman they married at the beginning. Besides, saying that men don't change when it's well known that the moment a man marries a woman, his whole life revolves around his family, supporting the family, paying the bills for the family, leaving an inheritance for the family, educating the children, covering the expenses of his wife, giving his woman a home, taking care of her emotionally. Do you think it's an easy task for a man to do all of that and not eventually feel overwhelmed by the mental burden that comes with it? But of course, let's not forget that marriage is only about making the wife happy. So you probably noticed a lot of people in their 30s getting divorced lately, so let's talk about it. Now, a majority of my clients, yes, are women, but I will say this, they are very consistent across the board as to why they are getting a divorce. And I pretty much have a theory to what has caused this to happen in such big numbers to people 30s and up. Growing up, we were told as women to sit down and be quiet, do what the man says. And we were really just told that, oh, marriage is hard, suck it up. Men were told, don't talk about your feelings, they don't matter, go to work and come home and provide. That's what you need to do. So what this created was a lot of women 30s and up who don't even have an identity because they don't know who they are other than being a mom and a wife. And they were really told not to even be themselves to be all these other identities that people wanted them to be, including their husband. And then it created a lot of men who are completely incapable of having a mature conversation or communicating correctly because they don't know how to process their emotions or even talk about them so they just hold them in and it comes out in anger and they end up gaslighting you. So take these women who were told to sit down, shut up and serve their husbands and that's what they're supposed to do and take them finding their true self and identity in their 30s and their voice and their confidence and add that to men 
who are still the same, the men in these situations that are still the same, and it's a recipe for disaster. You have one person changing and growing and you have somebody else who is still unwilling to admit they need to change and grow. The reason you see a lot of divorces now is because those people are truly finding who they are and being their authentic self and they can't beat that with somebody who has refused to change. And that's why, because of how we were raised back then. If we looked at relationships as a timeline from when they begin to when they end, we would understand who really changes and who doesn't. Let's say you're the man who marries a woman who came into the marriage with nothing. She doesn't work and decides to stay at home while you start working at a company from the bottom. Now, 20 years later, you're 40 years old, a manager with three kids. During that time, you bought a house that's paid off for your family, you have your vehicle and your wife's, you have health insurance, a retirement fund, and you can cover all the bills. Your wife has taken care of the kids and continues to support the home. This happens in almost every relationship, so does this mean they changed, right? The problem is that with the current divorce trend, that woman starts comparing herself with other women on social media, thinking her life has no meaning, and starts demanding more from you because she doesn't want to be just a wife anymore. She no longer wants the role she accepted at the beginning. She wants to be a strong, independent woman. You know how the timeline ends? The man returns to poverty. The woman, with a divorce, takes everything you worked for, and you're left starting over again. But of course, it's because you didn't change. If you don't believe it, just ask the man in the next video. When a man loses assets in a divorce, it's not all bad. I'll tell you why. If you have children, then it's your duty as a father to make sure your children are being taken care of. Okay? I've had people tell me that I took the biggest loss in, in my divorce. That's subjective. If you're a deadbeat father, yes, you took a big loss. But if you're a father that wants to make sure his children are being taken care of, then it's fair and balanced. What am I to do? Am I to tell my children and their mother, go out and live in the streets and you take care of it, you figure it out? No. Because when I bought my house, I intended to leave it for my children. That was my intention. My intention was when they turned of legal age was to try to buy another home and give them that home so they have something secured. So, you know, if you look at it in this way, you'll see that it makes sense. When you want to go out and hire a full-time nanny, right? Now, their mother is their full-time nanny, but she's more than a nanny. She teaches them, she guides them, she looks out for them, takes them to the doctors, uh, takes them to the library, does all these things that a nanny wouldn't do. And if you want to go out and hire a full-time nanny, go see how much that's going to cost you. And the quality of care is way less than a mother. If you look at it in that way, you'll see that it's fair and balanced. A man who has children and gets divorced has obligations still, in my honest opinion. You can't just say, you know what, we're divorced. I worked. Everything stays with me. I think that's a bit unfair, okay? You got to look at the big picture. Now, would I have loved for the marriage to stay intact? Yes, ideally, yes. But the thing is, when you suffer from narcissistic abuse and you damn near lose your mind, you lose your ability to think and decide and a whole bunch of factors, then it's a matter of life or death and Luckily, I made the right decision and I gained my health back. So take care, guys, all right? I'm not going to say what she did was wrong. It was her decision to do it. But personally, I don't agree with it. First, 
There's the option of having my kids stay with me because, at the end of the day, she has to work and would spend almost the same amount of time away as you would. Secondly, leaving the rights to your house to a woman isn't the same as leaving them to your children. Do you know how many men do this? They divorce the woman, leave her well off, and five or ten years later, the woman, with her poor financial management, loses everything. I'd much rather put the house in my children's names so that she can't sell it even if she's living there. The next thing is that you're leaving the woman comfortable for the next man who will come into your house. Why on earth would I do that when I have to go live a worse life and still have to pay child support every month and give her half of my money? Everyone will have their opinions on this, but I'd rather leave my house to my kids, have them come live with me, and take responsibility for raising them, than leave everything to someone who could easily sell it all tomorrow, leaving your kids with nothing from what you worked for. I'll look forward to seeing your opinions in the comments. This one's gonna be hard to hear. For years, I was a controlling wife. I felt that if I didn't control the situations or the things that happened, that we would be in dire disaster. I didn't trust my husband enough to allow him to lead. And the really crappy thing is, I shouldn't even have to say, allow him to lead. Because again, that sounds controlling. But I realized something. I was so scared of our family going into a disastrous situation because my husband had anger problems, a super short fuse. So I deemed him unworthy to lead, which was completely wrong on my part. But what I didn't realize is that I was slowly putting our family into a disaster situation because I was making choices based on what I thought was best rather than me and my husband working it out together. The problem is I was making the choices. Now, some of you might say, well, why didn't your husband just take charge? Oh, he tried. I was very stubborn, very hard headed. And so he got to the point where he gave up. And I'm sure a lot of you have been there and you're thinking, Ugh, my husband's lazy. He won't do anything. He doesn't want to lead. And honestly, that was just due to years of me trying to lead and pushing off anything that he said. So then I had to swallow my pride. I had to say, okay, Jesus, take the wheel. And that's when I realized my marriage was less about my relationship with my husband and more about my relationship with God because I had to learn how to be a good wife. And funny, when my husband started taking the lead, huh, seems like the house got figured out. And things got balanced. It took a while to get there, due to many years of my mistake, but we finally got there. So if you're a wife out there struggling with the same thing, trust me, I get it. But it's time for you and your spouse to come together and make decisions together. To allow him to lead the family where you need to go. Because to be honest, men are actually really smart. Well, most of them, not all of them. Because women react out of their emotions and men use logic. There's a reason why men were chosen to be the leaders of the home and the head of the household. They just have a different set of skills than we do. And that's okay. Just like we were chosen to have babies and they were not. Because let's face it, they could not handle it. So if you want to learn how to become a better wife, because let's face it, we can all learn to become better, check out our Restore Your Marriage course right there on our profile. And use that to help you grow and become better to grow and restore your marriage. Because she had to learn how to be a good wife, that's the issue. Do you know how many talented men can't get ahead simply because of the woman they have by their side? Women who don't support you, who don't let you take the initiative, who belittle you, who want to contradict every decision you make. I've always said that there can't be two men in a house. If a woman doesn't let her husband lead, it only ends in divorce. Women today have so much masculine energy that they can't take a step back and let their man lead the household. It's not about controlling you. It's about accepting decisions that could be good for both of you. She understands that when she tried to be the head of the household, everything started falling apart because she couldn't connect with her feminine energy and the man couldn't be masculine. Women, let your man lead. Your job is to support your husband, not to be the man. It's to take care of your man so that he can be a better husband for you and your family. Remember, the man is the guide and the woman is the stability. All my divorced mamas, listen up, okay? Sometimes we get into this idea after we get divorced and as we're getting divorced, the trauma and pain and hurt and fighting and lawyers and blah, blah, blah gets so much that we're like, we will never be happy again. I have zero hope. I don't even understand. Like, I got out of this marriage because it was terrible. I don't think I'm ever going to be happy again anyway. Like, this is not worth it. This sucks. Three things. First of all, do not place your happiness and idea of future happiness on current circumstances. You are in complete control of your own happiness. Let me repeat that. You are in complete control of your own happiness and current circumstances are temporary. 
They will not be here in a year. They will not be here in five years, 10 years, 20 years. And you are bound to be happy. You are wired to create peace and happiness in your life. That's why this relationship ended is to create future happiness. But it's going to get worse before it gets better. It's going to be hard. As you unpeel <clears throat> those layers of trauma and forgiveness and anger and figuring out who you, who you are and all of this compounded, it's going to be harder before it gets better. That is a promise. But it will get better. Number two, I once had a mentor that told me that happiness is at the intersection of gratitude and growth, okay? So I know right now you're like, the last thing I can be is grateful. I'm not going to sit down, make a gratitude journal. Do it. Let me just say, just try it. Just write down the things that you are so grateful for. Your health, your children, your children's health, your home, your parents, your support system, your friends, whatever it is, just write it down and just sit in a moment of gratitude and then create action. Growth and continual progress, I promise you, is essential to healing and feeling like you can move on. The longer you stay, stay stagnant and in this icky, messy, just swamp of like victimhood and anger and lack of progression, the more you're going to feel like there is no hope. You are never going to get out of this. Do little things every single day to create some progress. Go to the gym. Get a different job. Create that. Start that freaking business because you can now, okay? Create some sort of growth. As you're growing and creating momentum and healing and in growth and then being gratitude, that's where happiness actually is, okay? Number three, write this down a million times a day if you need to. Write, everything always works out for me. It's weird and almost creepy how obsessed the universe is with making sure that I'm okay and happy. Everything always works out. And it's true. Has the world ever burned down? No. You got this, girl. I know you can. You can do it. Oh, my God. The wall doesn't forgive. <laughs> do you know what the biggest difference is between a divorced man and a divorced woman? It's the recovery process for each. In this country... We can say that almost 90% of men are ruined after a divorce, and with a divorce rate of 45% after the age of 40, it makes it even worse. Women have a harder time getting into a new relationship because, let's be honest, men don't want women with kids, even in their 30s. Only single fathers or beta providers, who are almost always 10 years older, are willing to take that on. But here's the thing. A man who focuses for a year or two can bounce back. That's the wonderful thing about being a man. Just focus on a diet and the gym, get your finances in order after the divorce, learn new skills, and focus on improving just 1% each day. I bet that man will recover and look better than when he was married because, as I said, being a man is wonderful. You just have to do the work. I assure you, your ex-wife will come looking for you because when she sees your best version after leaving her, she'll panic at the thought of another woman having what she had. Trust me, by always focusing on yourself and improving, you'll see how wonderful it is to be a man. We've reached the end of the video, but before we go, the questions are for you. What do you think about leaving your house to your ex-wife in a divorce? Have you ever been with a woman who didn't let you lead? How did it end? If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. Your support means the world to us and motivates us to create more content. Stay tuned for the next exciting video from The Wall.